Hey, welcome back to Grit Gym. Today is about health. Uh, we were supposed to have an interview today, but uh, Blair pussied out, so he didn't. He didn't make it in here. I'm kind of kidding, but he's gonna come on the show here in a little bit and hear that. So, so it's better for me. But anyway. He'll have something to say, I'm sure. But anyway, he's going to come on next week, same time, Friday. Uh, today, we're going to talk about health. Health is the most important resource in your life. You cannot enjoy your time. You cannot enjoy your relationships. And you cannot do anything with your money except spend it on your health if you don't have health. Uh, health is going to be the number one thing in your life. And if uh, and it's just made by like process of elimination. If you add it all up, if you start if you start looking at, you know, uh, why like uh, like everybody wants more of one at least one thing more uh, more or better relationships more or better health more or better wealth more or better time okay so why do you want more time do you want more time so that you can feel miserable no you would want more time so that you can maybe make more money or maybe that you can enjoy your relationships better but you're not gonna uh, want more time so that you can work out more no one's gonna want that but you're not gonna want more time if you feel like shit all the time and part of feeling better is about exercise. Part of feeling better is about nutrition. Part of feeling in better health is about mindset. And part of feeling better uh, in better health is about recovery. There's four wheels to this car, and if you're missing one of them, it's going to be a problem, right? And the reality is that most of us, uh, on some level, at least have one wheel that is drained down, or one wheel that we habitually let drain down. You know, mine. I let the recovery game get the best of me on a regular basis. It's the, probably the biggest one. I don't have a problem with exercise. I get myself into the gym. I do real well with my nutrition. Uh, mindset stuff is something I work on a ton, but recovery is something I lose out on. So I have to make sure, like for instance, there's an alarm that goes off at 10 o'clock in our house, and that alarm means go to bed. Okay, I have to have that alarm to push me into bed. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Everybody has their thing. Like most people run around with at least one one tire that is flat. Either their recovery, their mindset, their nutrition, or their exercise. They won't know if their mindset is off. Nobody knows that one. Nobody wants to admit that one. Uh, they might know if they're not exercising properly. That's the easiest one to go to. It's an external thing. We can push out and do that thing. Uh, their nutrition, I think that people probably know that it could improve or it could be better or they could switch to a different uh, style of eating that would be better for them. Uh, that's something that uh, you really have to take into consideration. Uh, I think there's a ton of confusion out there on it, but I think most people know that exercise and nutrition are options and these are things that we need to be pushing for, but I think we really tend to leave out the mindset thing because we don't even know that we don't know that it's there uh, or that we could be making errors within that. Because uh, you can't see the picture when you're inside the frame and that's why you get a coach, okay? Uh, if you're wondering, I've gotten a coach on every single topic that I've ever been interested in. Um, anyway. Today, we're gonna to talk about strength. Why be strong? Why is strong part of the equation when it comes to your health? You know, why, why is strength such a big deal? Why do we talk so much on this show about getting stronger? Uh, well, because being strong allows you to go out into the end of the life that you want to live and live it uh, with the experience that you want to have. You know, if you don't have strength, you can't stand up out of a chair. If you can't stand up out of a chair, how much fun is life going to be? Uh, it's not going to be near as fun. Being able to go out and do stuff requires strength. And, the, and your body's ability to move is the whole, is the whole show. Uh, most of this show is going, to be, uh, is going to be based around the question, are you trying to get better at moving a barbell or trying to move a heavier barbell? Or are you trying to get better at moving? Uh, and the, the reason for this is because, uh, th let me back up, a person who focuses on, uh, I wrote this down earlier, a person who focuses on moving a healthier, a person who focuses on moving a heavier barbell before moving better will end up with neither, and a person who focuses on moving better before moving a heavier barbell will be great at both. So we're talking about movement patterns and being really, really strong in those, and those end up making you be able to move a barbell that's heavier if that is your goal. Now, if your goal is just to go out and beat your kid in a game of basketball uh, or to pick your grandkids up off the floor uh, when they've fallen asleep at your house, uh, that's a different goal. We don't need to compete in that. Uh, picking up a heavier barbell isn't going to really help us right, uh, help us much there, or is it? Okay. But we have to put the priorities in order. We have to say, okay, we gotta we gotta focus on strength first. We gotta or we gotta focus on moving strong first. 
the movement of strength, okay? And there's, a, there's five big things that we have to get in order here if we're going to do that. Five big ones. Because uh, if you don't, you end up injured, you don't make any progress, you actually backslide, your health suffers, everything suffers because of it. But if you get these five down, uh, no longer does it have to be the case that, that it is inevitable. Most strength and conditioning professionals and most competitive athletes would agree that at some point you're going to get injured. Uh, but you're in the general population. Aside from a freak occurrence, like, you know, you, you twist your ankle uh, because, uh, uh, in a, like, because you, you step funny or you're walking around in the dark. You know, those are, those are freak occurrences. I'm talking about injuries because of what happened in the weight room. You know, if you are a competitive power lifter, you're probably going to get injured at some point. You're going to tear a pec, you're going to tear a hamstring, you're going to do something like that. The general population doesn't need to be training like that. They need to train smart. And really, I think that you could make the case for that uh, competitive power lifter as well. But you have to do these five things. And the first one, and we talk about this one a lot, well, one, you got to do the math. You have to do the math. No matter what, you have to do the math. Math is part of the whole thing. If you don't do the math, if you don't quantitate uh, the whole scenario, you're going to, if you rely on your feelings, you're, you're going you're gonna to mess it up. It's just going to happen. Uh, I do it all the time. Everybody does it all the time. If you did the math, you'd be better off for it. You want to, two, is that you want to coax the gain. Strength is not a, a matter of beating the shit out of the body. You cannot beat the shit out of the body repeatedly and expect it to love you in return. It does not do that. That is not how it works. Consistency will always win. Okay? We always want consistency. Consistency is always intensity is by design. We design when we're going to, we decide and design the whole program to, to get to a point where we can, build, we can use that intensity. Consistency is, the, is where you get all your strength and then you test it out with intensity. Number three, the magic is in the recovery. I talked about the recovery earlier in, this, uh, earlier in this talk quite a bit, probably because I, I planned on spending quite a bit of time on number three. The magic is the recovery. You cannot overtrain, you can only under recover. Okay, the, I, I, the more that I can get that into people's heads, the better. You cannot overtrain, you can only under recover. You cannot overwork yourself, you can only under recover. You do not get an injury because you pushed and pushed and pushed. You got an injury because you didn't recover from the pushing, okay? Uh, there, there, there's, there's a line to everything and there's a line to that too. So um, like, uh, but that is an extreme line. Number four, exercise prescription. This is something that you have to do. You have to think about. There's a big difference between a front squat and a goblet squat. Not everybody is going to be able to walk in and do a front squat. It's just not going to happen. For one, the bar weighs 45 pounds. Uh, and even, even if that, even if we just left it there and you said, okay, well, what about the Alumalite bars that are 15 pounds and someone can, uh, can squat 25 pounds for their max, shouldn't, couldn't they use a 15 pound barbell? Not always. Because the thing with the front squat that makes you do is to force your upper back to extend and to get your arms through. Some people don't have that. They just don't. It's not there for whatever reason. And that is a huge portion of how your core actually uh, translates into movement. How your core holds position so your legs and your hips can produce the movement. Okay? The core stops movement. The hips and the legs produce movement. Um, but Exercise prescription. We're going to get a little bit into that. Number five, you have to respect and appreciate the rest of the puzzle. The rest of the puzzle is that there's more to this thing than just strength. There's power, there's speed, there's alactic, glycolytic, aerobic, stiffness, mobility, and stability. These are attributes that the body already has, and I'm talking about the move strong matrix here. Uh, you have to have all of these things. You can't just focus on strength, but the reason why I talk about strength so much is because strength has to come first. If it comes second, you lost out. If you, if, if, you, it, if you take the time to grow your aerobic capacity, which your body is already great at because you're a human being, uh, that's fantastic and all. But if you would have taken the time to grow your strength, and I'm talking about strength within, the, uh, within a quality movement pattern, not strength to move a heavier barbell, then you would have, been, you would have gotten more out of your aerobic capacity first. If you focus on speed, you would have gotten more if you would have just focused on strength first. Your alactin glycolytic, your fat loss, your muscle gain. If you just would have focused on strength first, everything else would have kind of fallen into place for you. 
Okay? You have to focus on strength first. It has to be your priority first. It is the first thing in all things. Okay? On some level, your strength should, uh, should work through your mobility, st stability, and stiffness also if we're focusing on good, good quality movement patterns. This is a Venn diagram. It is not so. It is very black and white, but it is not, uh, it is not like um, there's no transition between the black and the white. There's a ton of black and a ton of white, and there's a short little transition, sort of like uh, between your muscle and your, and, uh, and your, lick, or your, muscle and your tendon. Uh, there's a point in there where which one is it? Is it muscle or is it tendon? There's just a bunch of fibers and we don't know which one's which. Is it a little bit of this, a little bit of that? Because it merges on some level. So anyway, this thing is not, uh, it is not completely black and white, but most of this stuff is pretty clear. All right, so one, do the math. Two, coax the gain. Three, the magic is in the recovery. Four is the exercise prescription. And five is appreciating the rest of the puzzle. You have to look at the matrix and, and figure out that. So what does it mean to do the math? Well, doing the math means you gotta you you, you have to have a chart. And we're gonna we're actually in the process of creating a uh, a calculator for this. I did it all uh, I did it all through <laughs> I did it all through Excel, um, and and it'll be available to everybody. and It'll be really cool. But um, but for instance, if you could if you could do two hundred pounds, uh, if you could do two hundred pounds on a bench press or a squat or a deadlift, wouldn't really matter for let's say five reps. Well, we know that five reps is about 88% of your one rep max. If it is 88% of your one rep max, then we can take 200 and we can divide that by 88% and that can equal the amount that we can possibly do, which is probably around 225 pounds for uh, a one rep max. That's doing the math. Um, so we have to do the math so that we can decide what we're going to do. So if we were doing five sets of five, for week two, week two, week one, week two, week three, geez, week four, all right, we wouldn't do, we wouldn't build up to a set of 88% right here. We might build up to a set of 88 down here, but what I would rather you do is go 86, 81%, 76%, uh, and 71% of your one rep max over here. And uh, I don't really want to sit and do all the number out times 200, but you can do that for yourself. Uh, and that will give you a build up to this one rep max set. And then you can try to do that for as many reps as you possibly can. Because if you can do, like, let's say that you can do 200 for five reps, okay? If you can do 200 for five reps, then, and, and, and the previous month, and then in this month you go through and you end up doing 200 for eight reps, did you get stronger? Yes, you did get stronger because you can do three more reps. Okay, you did five before, now you did eight. Eight, uh, what is eight? Eight's like, I don't remember. I think it's, uh, what is it? It's probably somewhere around 80% or 76%, something like that. Anyway, so we have to do out the math. What most people do is they, they, they try to go up to an 88% right here. This is a huge mistake. Drop this by 10%. So 76, 76, 71, 61, uh, and then maybe 71, we drop, and then go five, 71, 66, 56. And I would say do the exact same thing for week one as you did for week two, and then up it by 5%, and then up it by 10%, and then try to see what you can do there. That's an example of doing the math. You have to do the math. If you don't do the math like this, you're gonna end up coming in and be like, well, I feel really strong on, or I feel really crappy, let's say. I feel like crap. I, I went out and drank the night before. Um, so I, I'm not gonna do all my sets. I, I'm, or, and maybe you should not do all your sets, but I'm not even gonna work up. I'm only gonna work up to uh, a set of 95 and then I'm gonna be done. It's like, well, okay, well, is that really what we wanted to do? I don't know, it depends on you, but we wanna get some kind of stimulus. We wanna get something if you're prepared uh, let's say even if you did feel like crap, okay? So let's say you felt like crap that time, so you basically did your deload here instead of here, which was dumb, and then you came over here to week three and you're like, man, I feel great. I'm going to, I'm going to do tons of different weight. I'm, going to, I'm just going to load up. I'm going to really work hard. We got yourself all sore. You wore out your nervous system, and now you're not recovered for week four when we had designed for you to go out and really kill it. So you end up sacrificing your strength gain. You end up sacrificing your movement gain. You end up sacrificing your tissue quality. You end up sacrificing the program. You didn't get as much out of it as you could because you went by feel instead of going by an objective number that will 
that isn't perfect. This isn't perfect. It is not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to bring you up when you're feeling like crap and it's supposed to slow you down when you're feeling really, really good because we want consistency in the first three weeks. We don't want intensity in the first three weeks. We want consistency. And then we design the intensity in week four so that you can see and test out what you gained. Okay? That's an example of doing the math. You have to do the math. This also goes into, it's a good lesson on how to, how to coax the gain. Notice how 86%, 76%, and 88% are all different numbers. Well, why would you use 86% of a one rep max at five, at five sets if it's 88%? Uh, well, the reason that I would drop it down 2% is so that you can do the reps. Because I want to see reps. I want to see reps. If you can do 200 for eight, you are stronger than when you could have done 200 for five. Okay, that's why. Uh, do it, and then we dropped it down 76, 71, 71. Why? Why would we spend so much time so far underneath the, uh, the max weight that you could possibly do? Because strength isn't about beating the crap out of your body. It's a coaxing. It's a come with me, come with me. Uh, it's a, it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to give it a signal. We're trying to give it this like little morsel to lead it along. And then the body responds by giving us something. Right, so you you put this thing on the ground. It respond. It's a, uh, maybe that's a bad example. So you you uh, you go lift, and your body's like, okay, well, I'll give you a little bit more strength. And then you go lift, and you eat a, a ton. It says, okay, well, I'll give you a little bit more muscle to deal with that. And you go eat, and you eat your vegetables, and you eat your grass fed beef, and you eat really well, but you only eat, uh, meet the ca uh, your 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 calories enough to maintain. Well, your body recovered better, and so it said, okay, well. Um, I'm gonna take some fat off for you. We're gonna lose some fat, we're gonna gain some muscle. And so you give it these signals and your body responds to it so that, it so that we can design and we can play this out to morph your body into something better than what it could have been had you just sat on the couch. Um, so you have to coax the gain. Uh, sitting on the couch is also beating the crap out of your body. Uh, not sitting on the couch is also beating the crap out of your body. Uh, you want to sit on the couch for a certain amount of time every day. You want to relax. That gets into number three, the magic of the recovery. All of this stuff, everything happens because you recovered. Everything, the magic happens in the recovery. You don't get strong in the weight room. You get strong when your body recovered from the signal that you gave it in the weight room. You don't lose fat in the weight room. Your body might burn some fat, but it's not burning this, this stuff that's sitting in your stomach. It's going to, later on, it's gonna be like, well, you know, if I'm gonna do this every day, I'm gonna run and I'm gonna exercise, I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna throw medicine balls, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z, man, I better drop some of this fat off my body so that I can be better at it. Your body will adapt to anything that you give it. If you sit on the couch all day long, your body will become better at sitting. If you sit in a chair like I'm sitting in right now, your body will become better at sitting. It will adapt to anything that you give it. It is extremely adaptive. You are the most adaptive thing that has ever walked the planet. Uh, for real, like our minds make it, our minds take it to another level. We've actually gone to every single known um, atmosphere and come back. You know, we would, no other animal's been to space and come back. You know, our minds make us extremely adaptive because we can create technologies uh, that allow us to do things. But uh, the 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 uh, what is it? The fight of the fittest. Darwin's Darwin's thing wasn't that. Uh, that the fittest survived. Darwin's thing was that the most adaptable species survives. The species that can adapt the best wins. Right. So if you end up missing a week, when you come back, what do you do? Because you still want to make gains, question mark, repeat the previous week, move forward to the next week. I would probably, I would just jump right back into my, I wouldn't repeat the previous week. I, I think that's what you're saying. Are you saying that like, if you worked out for two weeks, and you missed week three, what do you do? Well, I mean, if, if you missed week three, it's really easy. You're already really recovered and you didn't lose anything, so you just go ahead and, and, tense, and, and go intense for week four. If you missed week two, uh, it might be a little bit different because uh, you, like you don't wanna come over here and beast mode out on week three. You wanna just stay consistent with what you were gonna do on week three anyway. So it, like what I would do is I would just continue the plan. 
You know, if I miss week one, well, I'm recovered enough to jump into week two. If I miss week two, well, I'm recovered enough to jump into week three, but I don't need to go crazy. And if I miss week three, well, I just stick with the plan because I'm already recovered uh, enough and I'm feeling, I, I'm probably feeling really good to jump in and just hit that hard. So I would just continue the plan. I wouldn't change it very much. Uh, it, it, if it was me, um, I think most people can, can benefit from that. Now, if you were, th this is arguable if you were like a higher, like if, if you're like an Eddie Hall or a, uh, a top tier, like super like world-class athlete that, uh, that, that gets paid millions of dollars, like you, you might tell this a little bit, but general population, uh, it, even them, I would say just follow the plan. You know, you miss week three, jump into week four and hit it hard. You miss week two, jump into week three and do what you were going to do in week three. But I wouldn't repeat. Um, I, w I wouldn't come back here and repeat if I was going to move strong. There's nothing wrong with repeating it. So if you miss week two, do you start back at week two and then go week three, week four? There's nothing wrong with that either. You just, it's totally fine. Yep, that's exactly what I'm asking. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so we went through the magic of the, the magic is the recovery. You cannot overtrain. You can only under recover. Uh, real quick, uh, when when the Bulgarian method first started, uh, what they did, they woke, they'd wake up at six a.m., they'd eat, train, go back to bed, uh, and then they'd sleep until like let's say noon, and then they'd wake up, eat, train, eat again, go back to bed, and then they'd sleep until like five. Uh, let's say six. So they woke up again at six, eat, train, eat, uh, and then they'd stay up till like nine, wake back up again at 6 a.m. They were, uh, and the, the interesting thing about this, we've changed it a little bit since then, but we basically still do a version for the top tier, like really high level athletes. They basically still do some version of the Bulgarian method. The Bulgarian method really started to get to people's brains though. They didn't have enough recreation in their life, so they started to go crazy, but their bodies didn't break down. Their bodies did just fine and without drugs, without steroids, without human growth hormone, without insulin, without any hormonal replacement. They did just fine because, and it wasn't because, and so these guys are training really, really hard three times a day. So what is going on there? Because technically that sounds like overtraining. What happened was they're sleeping for like 16 hours a day so they could handle it. You cannot overtrain, you can only under recover. And there's, uh, there's some interesting things on the, the recovery thing from a fat loss standpoint too. Uh, one of the studies that came out a couple years ago was um, they had a control group and then they, basically they had uh, a control group and then they had another group. And the only difference between the two groups was that they had the, the other group slept um, an extra hour per night, I think it was. Anyway, the, the fat loss results from the two groups were, were drastically different. I think it was 20% more fat loss on the group that all they did, they didn't, they had this, the same diet, the similar diet, uh, similar exercise, all this stuff. Uh, the only difference was the sleep. If they slept more, they lost more fat. Uh, and there's, there's something there. There's definitely something there. All right, exercise prescription. Why would you use a goblet versus a front squat? Well, because goblet squat puts you in this position. When you're in this position, your trunk has to kick in. When your arms go out in front of you, your abs kick in. If you smash your hands together, you can probably feel your abs kick in a little bit. Uh, so there are certain things that you would use certain exercises for certain people and not for others. For instance, if you can't raise your arm up above your head and hit this position with your rib cage down, you have no business doing chin-ups. Also, if you don't have a very strong rotator cuff, you have no business doing chin-ups. So uh, somebody that, has, that doesn't have full overhead shoulder flexion with the rib cage in good position and doesn't have a very strong rotator cuff, they don't get to do chin-ups. They should do lat pull-downs. Uh, if uh, you're doing farmer's walks and you don't have that strong rotator cuff, you have to do goblet carries and just walk with the goblet carry. If you can't extend your upper back, you don't get to do farmer's walks. If you look like one of these people, you need to do goblet carries. Uh, John Yankee, talking to you, you need to do goblet carries and not farmer's walks. Um, there's a lot of different things like that. If you don't tolerate shear stress at your spine, you don't get to do deadlifts. You have to do other things. Exercise prescription is a big, big deal. Uh, people pay me a decent amount of money to make sure that their exercise prescription is on point so that they don't get injured and so that they don't, uh, so that old injuries don't flare up, okay? If you don't have a really strong core, you have to have that goblet position because the, you can't put a barbell on your back. If you don't take, if you don't take axial stress very well, something that we test is, uh, is a heel drop where we hit the heel on the ground. 
you're not going to get to do back squats. So exercise prescription is a very big deal. You, uh, you fit round holes into square pegs and you, and you force that, something's gonna give. And it's not gonna be the bar, it's not gonna be the weight that's gonna give, it's not gonna be the weight that's gonna break, it's gonna be your body. So you have to make sure that the, the exercise prescription is on point. Number five, I need to wrap this up, is appreciating the rest of the puzzle. The, the rest of the puzzle is extremely important. Okay? If you don't have the rest of the puzzle, you don't have the full spectrum of health. All right? And you cannot compare uh, collegiate football players, NFL players, and those kind of workouts, uh, celebrity, train, uh, celebrity workouts, stuff like that, those are silly. Uh, you have to look at this from a health perspective. If you do that, uh, it's going to take you almost entirely to where you want to go. Until you want like veins popping out of your ab muscles, uh, that's, a, that's like a different story. Um, before that, we can basically just focus on health and it will take care of everything. But, all right, so we've, been, we've spent this whole time talking about strength, right? Extremely important. Everything needs to start here. This is where the foundation for everything else comes from. Okay? If you do not have strength, you will not be able to, to benefit from power. Because this is another attribute. You will not be able to benefit from speed. Uh, you will also drastically lack in alactic, glycolytic. The, this is kind of like low intensity interval training. And this is kind of like high intensity. It, it is high intensity interval training. All right, and then aerobic. I'm just gonna write O2. That would be like jogging for long periods of time or cycling for long periods of time. If you don't do these things, what about stability? Stability actually plays into strength on some level. Uh, it's, it's more about the integrity of the joint, but if you don't have the integrity of the joint, how are you gonna practice uh, strength training? So there is a little bit, there's a relationship between all of these and stiffness. Stiffness is much more about what you don't stretch than what you do stretch, by the way. But, uh, so we've talked about strength this whole time, but if you don't appreciate the rest of the puzzle, you'll end up sacrificing the strength gains that you would have gotten, okay? If you don't get the O2, you don't recover as well. If you don't get the O2, you also don't get the capillary density. You don't get the, the blood rush. You don't get all this other stuff. So you want at least one day a week devoted to your aerobic training. All right, if you don't focus on power, eventually you lose out on strength. If you don't focus on speed, well, eventually you, you don't get the strength gains that you wanted to have. Um, and you also don't get to jump as high as your teenager and beat them in a game of basketball. Uh, it's same thing with power. Um, I've told you this many times, like it, when, when you get old, you start losing this first. You, well, you start losing the power first, and so you have to keep up on all of these. But when you, uh, when you get old, I guarantee you, you want this pyramid, okay? Because when you get old, you want to be able to do everything that you could have done your entire life, and then you want to drop dead. You don't want to spend the last five years not being able to do this one. All right, but the same thing goes here. If you can't do, this should go the complete opposite way because this is your base. If you get this, you get more out of these up here, okay? This is CrossFit. This is all they do. This is everything they do. They don't do anything outside of this. At Grit, we do this one, this one, and this one. All right, but you also need to focus on this too. You need to, and this needs to be your base, okay? You have to focus. So this is your base. Stability, strength, O2 is your base. Everything else is a bonus within that that takes you where you want to go. This is about joint integrity down here. This is about getting the joints to move the way they need to move, not about being able to move a bigger barbell. And this is about being able to do it a bunch of different times uh, and to get the, the health benefits out of it because you're, you're putting pressure on your heart in each one of these. It just depends on how you're doing it. But anyway, those are the five. You have to do the math. You have to coax the game. You have, to, you have to take into consideration that the magic is in the recovery. You have to have proper uh, exercise prescription, which I think that's gonna be Eric and I's topic next week um, on Thursday, so you guys wanna tune into that one. And you have to respect and appreciate the rest of the puzzle. Anyway, that's my presentation for today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, share if you have other questions. Um, I'm always up for questions. Questions are great. But anyway, thanks for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll see you on Monday.